this lecture, I will discuss about application of nanotechnology in medicine. This area is really expanding very rapidly and it is projected that uh, within next 5 to 10 years, the present practice of conventional medicine is going to change completely by introduction of nanomedicine. Now, this concept of nanotechnology is also not a very old, old concept. And before we start talking about the concept, let us see that what is nano. See the nano obviously any nano material or object which is in the nano scale. And so far as the medicine is concerned, we understand much better that way if we compare it with the different cells in our body and other cellular elements. So, in that in this figure you can see the different macro objects and as well as micro objects and also nano object. The virus will be the typical example because usually we handle the nano material in the dimension of 100 nanometer for different in vivo use inside the body and so that is the di virus dimension. And this first concept which is came of the nanotechnology is by the seminal lecture of Nobel laureate Richard Feynman and who in 1960, I mean as early as 1960, he just made this concept that I quote from it lecture, the tiny nano robots and related machines could be designed, manufactured and introduced into the human body to perform cellular repairs at the molecular level. So, obviously, with this inspired by this concept, large number of research is now initiated and currently you see there are more than 500 companies world over working in the area of nanomedicine. More than 2000 products are in the preclinical and clinical trial, some of them in the market also available in India. And among all these areas, the major areas are therapeutic where the drug delivery, particularly targeted drug delivery and diagnostics. These are the two main important areas. Apart from that, there are other interesting hybrid areas like application in tissue engineering, bio-inspired material and also many other self-assembly material. So, the overall the scope of application of nanotechnologies medicine is tremendous, but it needs a total interdisciplinary team from conceptualization, development and application. Now, I will give you example from the experience of our group working in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, so that you also can get inspired to really think about the translational research in the area of nanomedicine. Now, in the area of diagnosis, we use these nanomaterials for imaging, for molecular detection and this concept is coming as a lab on a chip and then also the development of the nano biosensors. These nano tiny sensors can be implanted inside the body and at the therapeutic level, the major thrust is the drug delivery. Apart from that, they, it can be used for photothermal aberration, tissue engineering particularly stem cell delivery and cell based therapy, the DNA and RNA delivery which are also very important because non viral vectors are becoming more important because of danger of the virus associated problem in the human body. And then another important area is antigen delivery. As you know that the currently the only adjuvant we use for antigen delivery is alum, but alum has got a lot of side effects and also quite a bit of limitation. But you can load your antigen in the nanoparticle and it can deliver inside the body which can act as a better adjuvant. So, all these different areas obviously are quite fascinating. Apart from that, there are many other areas also one can develop. Now, I will give you few example from each areas. The first we will talk about the diagnosis of the disease. The whole diagnostic areas the was conceptualized long back in development of these biomems that is biomedical or biological micro electrical mechanical systems. So, these are now miniaturized in the nano. So, obviously, it will come not the micro electronics and mechanical devices, but it is nano electrical and mechanical devices. So, obviously, the definition all of you know. So, I am not going to go into the details. So, but it leads to higher sensitivity, reduced the reagent volume and associated cost, 
it reduces the time and also portability and miniaturization of the system. So, that your whole actual the working station or the, uh, the analysis station is maybe in the size of a cell phone and you can carry it to the bedside also and it will be needing power from batteries. So, that way it will totally revolutionize the normal analytical testing which we do in different uh, biochemical parameters. Now, the, the principles I think most of you know, it can be a mechanical detection system where we usually use these the nano lever system, maybe the length of this lever is around see 500 to 800 nanometer and the width is about 8 to 10 nanometer and in the, in the tip of that one can paint with an antibody molecules and if you drop your specimen from top, then if there is specific antigen it will bind with this antibody and that will lead to increase in the weight in that area which will cause the deflection of this tip of this liver downwards. So, that deflection you can detect and thereby you can say that what you were looking for particular antigen you can detect it. So, so these kind of things you can do by electrical system, electrical detection system as well as optical detection system where you use your detector as a nano. Now, nano has a huge advantage because if you nanotize a material, it increases its surface area, reactive size surface area in a high magnitude level and that gives you the more to actual react with your molecule which you are searching for in a sample. So, technically it is possible that even in a volume of sample, you have got few bacteria or few virus. Say for example, in a 10 ml sample, you have got 100 virus particles. So, technically it is not possible even to, to do PCR and separate out them, but in this kind of system, this is an, an photograph from quoting I am from a nature paper. So, obviously you can see the vaccine of virus particle, the two are there, but the one in the top of this cantilever, you can detect it very easily. The nowadays the different kind of hybridization which we use and there the nano chip system is coming up and that has been used in different labs whether we know or do not know. And uh, the final concept which is a very complex one is development of these lab on a chip system with microfluidic devices. Here you will be needing the volume of the blood around 20 microliter even less than that and that small droplet can be leviated by the microfluidic system through this the first uh, the part of this path and then after that it can come into the area of these nano array of the antigen detection. So, obviously the 1 1 nano detector will be the represent 1 1 type of antigen and when your that drop of blood will, will uh, rotate over those areas, it can detect the different kind of antigen. And next compartment you can dissociate and take out the cells from the blood and even can do the PCR, RNA isolation and do the hybridization experiments. And finally, you can get the result of large number of your analytes and this data can be also transmitted to the remote computer. So, that level of sophistication can be possible by application of nanotechnology because the application is very, very advanced in your cell phone. Most of your advanced smartphones nowadays carry the nano chips which is around 100 nanometer in dimension. And so now, with these kind of lab on a chip, those nano chips are embedded. So, your data analysis and transmission is not a problem at all. Now, coming down to the imaging, the, the quantum dot which is the cadmium selenium uh, nanoparticle, this emits this very high uh, amount of fluorescence which are not leachable and in the top uh, right side corner, the different kind of nanoparticle we have synthesized in our lab. But I am quoting you that advantage is that you can tag it with different kind of antibodies and you can level any part of the cell or anything you want. So, basically the in our lab we have developed a system which we are calling as the uh, infa system that is immuno nano fluorescence assay system. The concept is very simple, uh, we, we tag our quantum dot with the, with, with, with the antibody, specific antibody to detect antigen. This particular project which we are working is, is detecting from the urine the cases of prostate cancer. Now, as you know the prostate cancer is detected by the serum estimation of uh, prostate specific antigen or PSA, but the PSA level around 40 percent cases are falsely high. So, we thought 
that we do dual marker study. So, we picked up urine because that is a non-invasive uh, test we can develop and which can be done for screening in the rural areas also. So, there a urinary PSA is also possible to detect along with that we want to detect another molecule which is called MSMB. Now, MSMB when there is cancer transformation of the prostatic epithelial cells, then they reduce the production of MSMB. Where there is inflammatory conditions and other conditions, MSMB production is pretty high, normally also it is high. So, in a situation where we can see the PSA level is high going up and MSMB level is going down, then it will be a better indicator that the person may have a cancer. So, that whole thing we are developing in the quantum dot based. It is a basically ELISA kind of system, but it will be very easy. It will be a single point measurement and it can be a strong fluorescence based assay system which is easy to detect. Then in the imaging side, the, the very important area the, of the recent concept of molecular imaging and also theragnostic. Now, molecular imaging because the normal imaging you can just see the dimension of your damaged tissue or the different kind of tissue. But what is happening in the tissue, the functional component is very difficult to assess. Whereas, here in this context, if you use a nanoparticle and tag the nanoparticle either with an antibody which can detect the antigen, you can tag the nanoparticle with some sensors of pH, we can tag with some sensor of temperature and so it can alter the character when it reaches the particular target cells by which you can detect the very few the cancer cells which are early metastasis which is not possible to detect by the normal conventional imaging system. So, those that is why are called the molecular imaging or the functional imaging and, uh, and so this is a very important area. The, the use of gold nanoparticle as radio contrast is the initial work, but the problem is that this gold nanoparticle once you inject inside the body is very difficult that how they will come out and always we have a danger with the metal inside the body. But in our lab we have, real, we have already studied that if you make nanoparticle of gold, it is around 5, 10 nanometer and less, then it comes out through the urine very quickly. So, that is why in that range it may be safe to use inside the body and in the animal tumor model we have demonstrated on the right side, it is really do a very good contrast agent work. Now, we have also worked with the uh, supraparamagnetic iron oxide nanoparticle which can be used for MRI imaging and you can we have conjugated them with the folic acid which can detect the breast cancer and other uh, ovarian cancer uh, very easily and early and it has got fantastic MRI capability. Now, so this kind of work is also can be done with a huge potential. Now, the recently the another area is coming is uh, for in vivo imaging where you can use the fluorescence uh, marker. Now, this fluorescence marker normally you see the different fluorescence molecules are used. Say fluorescent angio is done for your eye problem that you know, but the problem is that the normally this fluorescence uh, can move this fluorescence are very few distance only few millimeter and usually autofluorescence of the tissue is a huge problem. But then nowadays these near infrared uh, range fluorescence dye which has got the emission and uh, excitation range of 650 to 900 nanometer. This displays properties of low absorption and they can traverse almost 12 centimeter. So, it can inside the your body if I put the, uh, the nanoparticle tagged with this kind of dye, their presence can be detected from the outside. So, this has really really opened a new area and obviously, uh, quantum dot people used earlier, but it is very toxic. So, it is not, it cannot be used inside the body. So, we, we have used the different kind of system as you can see that we have done in the, in the rat and you can see that red dye uh, that uh, you can detect it, this, this rat is alive, alive. So, you can do it in vivo imaging without much problem of toxicity. The currently we are developing another system to, to detect the early uh, sentinel limb nodes. Sentinel limb nodes are the early limb node where the cancer cells spread. This is very important for breast cancer and head and neck cancer and as you can see that we have used the ICG that is indocyanin green and it, it can tag these epithelial cells in the limb node. So, the, the another area, so this is I think imaging I have given quite a few example now coming to the nucleotide delivery. Nucleotide delivery is also very, very uh, challenging because you want to deliver, if you want to deliver DNA, it has to be delivered into nucleus. 
you want to deliver RNA, it has to be delivered in the cytoplasm. So, obviously, you have to develop in a system where your material can be delivered a particular cytosol or nucleus. So, that way we have developed these kind of carrier and as you can see this is possible to give them orally. You cannot give any DNA RNA sample or preparation orally, but our system can produce given to orally and this you can see the rat intestine and liver the GFP is expressing after your nucleotide delivery. The vaccine development we have done quite fascinating work. See, the, if you, you load your antigen in the particle, then it is become a particulate antigen. And once it becomes particulate antigen, after it enters into the macrophages, while processing these antigen, they are inside these the endosome. And finally, if they fuse with the lysosome, they form phagolysosome. And when after that they process the antigen, so whole delivery to MSC1 and MSC2 pathway, it depends upon your particle on which you have loaded the antigen. So, we thought that if we take a slowly degradable uh, polymer, which can stay inside the macrophages for 3 to 6 months, then what will happen? And the, the initially, then what we, we really realized that it, it can produce a very prolonged, see this is the uh, data of this particle, the red dye we have uh, loaded in this particle to demonstrate them in the inguinal limb node of the mice. After two months, you can see those particles and the right side, you can see the adjoining CD4 positive cell, CD8 cells along with this red dye loaded particle and the, these are uh, produce the high antibody titer following subcutaneous and intermuscular injection in single injection in the mice after two months and you can see the alum tetanus toxoid is giving much lower uh, the antibody response. So, this is highly, highly effective, but after that, the another interesting thing we realize that it can be given orally. So, now we have developed a hepatitis B oral viral vaccine which we are trying in the rat, in the mice and guinea pig. And this is the data you can see that after giving them orally, these are loaded in the macrophages present in the intestinal villi. After 12 hours, these uh, particles we can pick up in the liver, in the lungs and in the inguinal limb node. So, they have reached all these lymphoid sites after oral delivery. This is only possible because we have loaded them in a particle which can pass through and absorb through the GI tract and enter into your lymphatic circulation and the lymphatic. And then if you see this oral antibody titer is almost highest in comparison to the intradermal and intramuscular and as well as your the normal uh, the SANVAC that is the vaccine which we are using for human currently. So, the another issue we also demonstrated that if you give them in the particular system and allow the antigen to be released in the cytosol, then majority of this antigen will be actually presented through MSC1. Because this is known antigen cross presentation, if cytosolic antigen is there, it will be obviously a bias for more of MSC1 presentation. So, we have demonstrated that our particle after entering into the cell, they come out of the endosome. So, they have these endosomal lysing properties. So, that particles are not, not resting in the macrophages in the phagolysosomal compartment they are there in the cytosolic compartment. So, that is why they are degrading slowly and they are releasing the antigen which is presenting through the, the cytotoxic T cell mediated pathway also. And in fact, that is why in currently we are developing the possibility of looking into our system for cell based therapy for cancer, where T cell therapy is a, is a very important area to work with. Now, give you a few example of the drug delivery which we are working. Drug delivery obviously fascinated one because as I told you more than 60 percent of the investment world over is the drug delivery system. It, it nano carrier uh, can actually target your drug at the site of action. It reduces the dose of the drug which is needed because as your drug is directed to the site of action and obviously it will be increasing therapeutic efficacy and it is lowering the toxicity. And it can also you can try to cross the different barrier like you can cross the tumor barrier, blood brain barrier biofilm in case of infection and also it is a very fascinating one that many of the drug which you can only inject cannot take orally with the nano system you can make them also orally deliverable. So, the initially we worked with macrophage targeting with a huge success and then we developed the targeting of these breast cancer cells. Obviously, you can uh, conjugate some of these uh, um, antibody or some of the molecule which is differentially expressed in the breast cancer. And uh, we have also developed a very unique system and in fact, we have patented it. 
is that four antitubercular drug can be loaded in the one particle because it is very difficult. You have to load them in different compartments so that the drug interaction cannot occur or should not occur at, at the same particle. So, we have done that and this I think is size of around 700 to 800 nanometer, little bigger because we have to make the compartment. So, we are trying to actually deliver it through respiratory route. So, can be with a puff, so it can work, hopefully it will work. So, this is the, the one system which we are trying to commercialize. This will be taking off uh, as a competitor of the ambisome, that is the liposomal delivery system of amphotericin B. These are actually cholesterol, chitosan uh, nanoparticle, which are solid nanoparticle and it has got the loading capability of amphotericin B is more than 75 percent. So, that is a huge <coughs> success in our area and in fact, we have shown that the, the IC50 that is 50 percent inhibitory concentration is 100 times lower in our system when we compared with, with this ambisome. And <coughs> the, uh, the animal trials are also producing excellent results. So, I think I can summarize at the end giving you uh, some concrete example on which we have worked that the nanotechnology in medicine can be used quite successfully in diagnosis of the disease, in imaging, in nucleotide delivery, in the drug delivery as well as in vaccine development. Thank you.